Mike Alpha, contact you, support you. And then they would bring in the, the other chemo, two nurses in what I call hazmat gear. They're not even going to spill the stuff on them, and they're going to pump it in me. And I'm laying there, and I'm thinking, I'm not going to wake up in the morning. I know it. And, and you know what the scary thing is? Okay. Angel Flights has just been a godsend. Okay, climb maintain one one thousand for Princess on three four zero golf tanker. Three four zero golf tanker, you broke six Mr. Conroe as well. Climb maintain one one eleven thousand. Conroe as well. Climb maintain one one thousand. Zero golf tanker. Seven three four zero golf tango, You stepped on earlier. Certify uh, clear to Conroe as well. Climb maintain one one eleven thousand. All right, so behind me, we've got a 1980 Cessna TR-182. TR because it's a turbo and it's a retract. And we are in Waxahachie, Texas. And we're gonna take off in this 182, fly over to the Granberry area and pick up Randall. We're gonna take him down to Sugarland, Texas so he can get some experimental treatment done for a particular type of cancer that he's fighting at MD Anderson. This is going to be an angel flight. I have nothing to do with this flight. I'm literally going to ride in the back seat and try to capture this story as best as possible. If you haven't heard of Angel Flight, it's this amazing organization that takes volunteer pilots with volunteer airplanes that volunteer their time and fuel to transport patients from one city to another to get the treatment that they need at a medical facility that they otherwise would not have easy access to. And Troy is gonna be our pilot. He owns this beautiful TR-182 back here. And it should be a great day. We have volunteer pilots that volunteer their airplane and their time and even pay the fuel to help people get where they need to go for medical treatment, humanitarian reasons, any of those kind of things. Uh, you know, we find out that a, a mission is needed for somebody that uh, like Randall that we're transporting today, he's got to go down to uh, Houston to MD Anderson, which is a cancer treatment center. And he's gone through multiple kinds of treatments. Right now he's in some experimental therapy that requires him to go from the Fort Worth area down to Houston almost weekly. You can imagine what that'd be like driving back and forth after chemo or whatever it is that he's doing. He's got a full-time job and a family. So we fly, we get him down there in an hour and a half, and then you and I are back up here real quick. He gets to stay down there and do his treatment. When he's ready to come home, another pilot goes and gets him and gets him home. Our passenger, Randall, told us a ton of his stories about how he's used his hobbies to get through these tough times battling cancer and how the progression of his treatments has changed his life. This guy is so full of character and there's no way we could fit the entire dialogue from this IFR flight into a short YouTube video. So as always, you can see the full length edit of this flight that's nearly an hour long on Cockpit Club. Link to that is down in the description. It'll start bucking a bronco. <laughs> that's right. Okay, everything looks good and in the green. Power is set. A little bit of wind from the right. Airspeed's alive. Seventy knots. Flaps coming up. Gears coming up. Yaw dampers coming on. Regional approach. Skyline eight five five. Whiskey hotels off midway. Climbing out of one thousand eight hundred to three. Runway heading. Oh, I stepped on the block. Number zero, Mike Alpha, turn uh, correction, climb and maintain one zero thousand. Five, let's go tell you, ready contact three south of Midway, climb and maintain three thousand. On up to three thousand bases, we're eighteen. Thank you. Tech on sixty one eleven, turn heading one five zero, intercept final approach course. One five zero, intercept below, you six below. Number two four seven nine, Mike, Fort Worth Center, Rogers, DFW, up to two nine or nine or four. Granbury traffic Skyline 855, Whiskey Hotel, short final runway 14, full stop Granbury. Wheels down, you got a wheel? I got a wheel. Alright, thank I, you. I see a nose gear. Got the power lines here we want to get over. The winds are 1207, we got a slight left crosswind. That puts us back on the approach. Okay, runway's clear. I don't see anybody or anything. The other thing you get that this airplane didn't originally have with the GFC 500 is uh, electric trim. Can be nice. Just marking the stall horn right where you want it, right? So I did remember this runway's got a bit of a pitch in it. Oh, no, I don't, whoops. There was Beautiful. something on the runway. Did you see that bird? I did not. I bet your camera got it. Probably did. 
Well, my name's Randall Bowden, and I have stage four cancer. Um, it's the fourth time in four years. Um, I kind of collect cancer like some people collect stamps, you know. <laughs> and you know, some people tell me I need a new hobby. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm a professor at Tarleton State University, and uh, so I go to MD Anderson. I've been going to MD Anderson Cancer Center for four years, and. Um, uh, about three years into this, um, we heard about my wife and I, my wife Cindy and I, mm -hmm. we heard about angel flights. We, did, we had no idea that there was such a thing. We'd been driving. And it's a, you know, it's a four and, four and a half, five hour drive, and we just drive back and forth, back and forth. And we heard about angel flights, so we contacted them, and they said, yeah, you just work through MD Anderson. And uh, MD Anderson has the social workers. And then the social workers uh, look at my schedule, and then they contact angel flights and say yeah Randall has these appointments and then angel flights will go ahead and put it in their in their books and then these pilots absolutely amazing will decide yeah I'd like to fly this person and they'll come and they'll pick me up and fly me to Houston and fly me back and but we also have a network of ground angels specifically in the Houston area primarily and those are volunteers with cars right they're not they're not even pilots sometimes but they want to help these people too and so when we pick up a mission, the ground angels in Houston contact the patient and say, what airport are you coming into? When are you gonna get there? Where do you need to go? And they find somebody on the ground that'll go pick them up and get them to their destination. The first time my wife and I flew, we're like, okay, how does this work? Do we tip them? Do we, you know, how, how do we do this? And so we just flat out, so we, say, we just had to ask, okay, so do we tip them? They said, no, you, no, this is on us. And it just, people with these big hearts that, that fly us, and, and I say this, um, part of why I'm alive is because of angel flights. Because my wife is an educator, I'm an educator, we don't have the money, we don't have the resources to do this. There's no way that we could be going back and forth to world-class medical care if it's not for folks who donate their, their time, their generosity, and their resources through angel flights. Grab the center line here. Everything's forward. Doors are shut. Coming up to 31 inches of manifold pressure. Short runway. Here we go. 31 inches. Airspeed's alive. Looking for 55 knots. Same abort plan as before, Josh. Accelerating. Gears coming up. Over 70 knots. Flaps can come up. Put gauge nav mode above 400 feet here. Autopilot's coming on. Angel Flight 5269, you up. Angel Flight 5269 is out of 2900 for 4000 direct wake up. Angel Flight 5269, forward center, radar contact, 5 miles southeast, Grand Barrier Airport, Grand Barrier Altimeter, 2990, climb and maintain, 9000. On up to 9000, Angel Flight 5269, thank you. Every once in a while on a long cruise, I'll turn off the yaw damper and see if the nose is trying to go one way or another. Trim that out here and then re-engage it, just so yeah. the servo is not having to hold it. Yeah, exactly. Get a little bit better speed too, right? For sure. You're not flying sideways. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it feels like my life, flying sideways. <laughs> flying yeah. sideways, yes sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Randall did us a solid when we had our gala last year, Josh. Um, we, had, <laughs> we had one guest speaker as a patient, and it was him. Oh, that's awesome. And we didn't know what he was going to say, and everybody in that room was... Even the guys have to three, Charlie, dry their eyes. He was having to dry his too, I think. Yeah. It was a very moving speech. That's really awesome. Skyhawk zero three Delta five miles. We ended up buying an old uh, 1948 Willys uh, CJ two A, oh, like, like an old wow, old right. um, army jeep. You know, uh -huh. uh, it's basically a bucket of rust, and so <laughs> we got it in the garage and everything. I've been 
slowly tearing it apart. Oh man. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Nice. That's a labor of love. Oh yeah. And it's great because I get out there and I start working on that thing and I just, I just forget about everything else. Oh sure. You know, there's so much going on and I had absolutely uh, no thoughts that anything was was um, going to go well on this thing. Right. Uh, and so I haven't been disappointed yet. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Houston Approach, Angel Flight 5269 is level 9 or 1000. Angel Flight 5269, Houston Approach, Roger, descend and maintain 7000, proceed direct Sugarland. 7000, direct Sugarland, thank you, Angel Flight 5269. That's a nice shortcut, right? So it was about, it was four, it was four years ago, this time of year. Okay. And I was pretty sick and, um, and I went to the doctor, like first thing in the morning, it was like 8 o'clock in the morning. He comes in and and I'd never been to him before. He starts asking me questions, and he leaves, comes back, starts asking me more questions. And his questions are getting more and more pointed. Like, yeah, he's on to something here. Yeah. And uh, I was, I was there almost all day. And then he sent me across town for uh, emergency um, X-rays and CTs. Uh oh, emergency. Ones. Yeah. So I mean, you just don't get in on right. a CT, right? So they ran these things. And, and uh, he said, hopefully we'll get the results back today, but if not, I want you here at 7.30 in the morning and be prepared to go to the hospital. Yeah. Okay. They didn't get the results back and went, went in the next morning. And they had already set up uh, for me to get into the hospital. And they said, we're not quite sure what's going on, but we do know that, that um, your left kidney is blocked. It's pretty bad. Something's something squeezing it off. Um, you're one point from kidney failure, and you have 250 times the toxins in your system that you're supposed than what oh you're supposed to have. Goodness. Now, three days earlier, I was competing in a 70.3. Oh my gosh! In out of Houston, and I made it through the swim, and I went. I got to transition, and I told my wife, I said something's wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah. And uh, and I quit. And, and, they, and, and that was why. And so they, they got me into um, um, the operating room and they put a stent in so that they could start draining my kidney. And within a couple of hours when the, when the doctor came back in, he said he, he almost didn't recognize me because my color and everything was starting to come back. Wow, wow. So they kept me in for four days and, and um, did some biopsies and stuff. and kind of kicked me around a little bit for another couple of weeks or so and then they decided yeah you, you've got cancer and they they ran some more tests and they said yeah you and then they sent me for a pet scan yeah i just lit up like a christmas tree inside yeah, yeah. Wow. that must have been scary I yeah can't so imagine that. yeah so i said well all right you know this question's coming how long do i have and they said everybody's different and i go i get it What's textbooks say? And they said 12 to 18 months. This is four years ago. So they said, we want you to go to MD Anderson. All right. Finally got into MD Anderson. So she goes, okay, good news and bad news. Uh, bad news is, yeah, it's pretty advanced. Good news is, um, it's kind of a common kind, and we, can, we think we can treat it. And, uh, and she said, um, so we're going to put you on this really heavy regimen, and we're going to take you down to nothing, but um, we think we can get at it. I'm like, okay. Well, I, I'm a researcher, and I know to, to de define your terms, but I'm out of my element, right? Her definition of take you down to nothing and mine were worlds apart. Mine was, yeah, I'm not going to feel good for a while. Hers was, if the chemo doesn't kill you, we'll cure you. Yeah. Wow. So I would go in on a Monday. They'd run all the blood work. And they'd admit me to the hospital. And then they would run, um, once I was settled in, they would run two hours of an IV drip. And then they would bring in the other chemo, two nurses in what I call hazmat gear. They're not even going to spill the stuff on them, and they're going to pump it in me. Oh, my goodness. That's unnerving. Yeah. You believe that? Wow. Oh. And so 
so they do two hours of that, and then they have to have eight hours of of a flush because it's so harsh. And then, and then um, 20, 22 hours later, they do it all over again. Goodness. And I do 20 hours a week, two weeks off, 20 hours a week, two weeks off. I, I do 80 hours of this stuff. I'm 68 hours into it. It's, it's week 10 now. I'm 68 hours into it, and I'm laying there in the hospital. And I'm not going to wake up in the morning, and I know it. Right. You felt that bad? Oh, my God, Randall. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at my wife. She's there with me through this whole thing. Now, my friends, my wife calls me OTH, stands for one tough hombre. Yeah. yeah. And my, my um, friends call me the toughest son of a bitch they've ever met. And um, I've been called Iron Man, Superman, indestructible, on and on and on. Rightfully so. Yeah, right, <laughs> until you get, chemo gets full of it. And I'm laying there and I'm thinking, I'm not going to wake up in the morning. I know it. And, and you know what the scary thing is? Okay. Yeah, you just better. designed to do it at that point. It's, huh? it's better than what I'm going through. Oh, goodness. And I'm sitting there looking at my wife and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking of my friends and my wife and I'm thinking, Okay, if I'm the toughest person they've ever met, ever, and if I can't make it through this, then what hope does that give them when they go through adversity? Right. And so I thought, i got to wake up in the morning. And I did. That's something. You are one tough hombre. You are one tough hombre. On uh, February 28th, they told me that, um, that I was cancer-free. Wow. And so they had gotten it. Nine weeks later, I did a triathlon. Wow. Unbelievable. I had, I had to go every three months back to MD Anderson for um, scans. And in March, um, they ran this scan and they said, have you had a fall lately or in a, in a car accident or anything? And I go, no. Why? They go, because we see this spot in your bone and your and your in your yeah. pelvis area, and uh, we want to do a biopsy. And I said, okay. So, so they took this biopsy. And we've got Mike, uh, they called me a few days later, and they said, uh, thank you have melanoma of the bone. Uh, and they said, uh, um, it's aggressive. Um, it'll eventually get painful. It'll start breaking your bones. Oh my gosh! Not much we can do. Um, we can we can try to make it comfortable, uh, but that's about it. So we're going to send you over to the melanoma center. So they finally get me over to the melanoma center. They got a whole different perspective. That's why they're specialists, okay? right? Right. You get a whole different perspective. And uh, you, you've learned not to take the first thing you hear at for at face value. Right. Right. Yeah. So they're. Um, uh, their doctors are going through all of the options on this thing. They have me on this stuff called um, Ipi and Nevo. The, the names are longer, but that's everybody has those short names. And um, and I'm going to go into this trial. And they're, what they're going to do is they're going to use uh, short short bursts of radiation on some of these spots. Okay. And it's, so the theory is that it's going to break them up. And then it's going to mix with uh, immunotherapy, and it's going to create its own vaccine unique to my system, and it's going to fight it. <laughs> so they do all of this work. They 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 poke me with these dots, so it's going to line me up you know, right. when I do this stuff. And um, I, I call them my million-dollar tattoos. <laughs> this isn't like getting your regular tattoos. This is more like prison tattoo stuff. Right. It's going to maintain 3,000. Down to 3,000 each flight 5269. Yeah, so it was about a month or six weeks later, I go back in for them to start zapping these spots. And this doctor says, we sort of have a problem here. I'm thinking, oh, man, it spread to more spots. He's, he, and he goes, yeah, we only see one spot in your arm. And that's a problem. Why? Right. Yeah. Right? So this Ipi and Nevo, my body loves it, uh, and um, and whereas this bone cancer, this melanoma of the bone, 
I didn't know there was a thing. This combination just starts taking care of it. Right. So they just zap my arm a little bit and start breaking it up. And yeah. Then, and it's gone. Now three months later or so, I go in for another scan, and, it, and they're like, well, we don't see anything in the bones. That's all good news. But we see a tumor. Yeah. Wow. So they, they bring in a surgeon. They schedule surgery, you know. So they, they take care of that. I go back about three months later for another scan, and I've got spots, you know. That's what they're trying to take care of now. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, hopefully this new trial is going to prove to be effective, you know. Yeah. There, um, when this doctor, she's really good, but when she started talking about this trial, she was really lighting up. Oh, yeah. So I could tell she really has high hopes for this one. That's really great. Yeah. Angel Flights has just been a godsend oh, no because kidding. of that. I can't imagine that drive. Yeah. After all the chemo and drugs? Yeah. yeah. And every week. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's, there's been times when I would drive in the morning, get my treatment, turn around, drive in the evening, back home. Oh, that's rough. If I could go to work the next day. Angel Flight 5269, descend to maintain 2000. I'm down to 2000, Angel Flight 5269. That should put us below the clouds. I expect to go between a couple layers here. Yeah. We're at a 4,900 descending. Ops were right at five. Thank you. Okay, autopilot's coming off. Confirmed off. Ears down. I might have been wrong about making that turn off, Josh. The man's a five echo hotel, frequency change approved. Five still, thanks, have a good day. Welcome to Houston. Yes, sir. It was a pleasure to fly with you again. Yeah, Elbow thank bumps. you. <laughs> Here's to the uh, Iron Man. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Boom. <laughs> One uh, tough hombre. Uh, OTH. That's it. Uh, OTH. One tough hombre. Troy's a good guy, yeah. Troy, he's a good pilot, that is for sure. I hate and, to say yeah, that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he's he's a really good pilot, and and uh, um, and it's it's amazing to see the differences in the in the pilots and their personalities. Uh, but they all, you can tell, they all care about what they're doing with Angel Flights. Flying these passengers, you get more out of it than you ever give them. That's what that was all about. You heard those stories, I and mean, you leave inspired. I mean, you know, if you found out tomorrow you have cancer, I think you would view your situation, it'd be scary, yeah, with a little bit different kind of optimism or hope, just hearing how that guy's handled it. You can't beat that. Flying is, is uh, very, very relaxing, and it gets me in a frame of mind to, to know that, um, you know, I've, I've got to face some medication and, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know that it's going to work and I don't need the added stress of driving. So this flying is marvelous. So I'm super happy that I got the opportunity to be a part of this. Thanks for the invite. You're welcome. Just had it. Appreciate that. You bet. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, just super awesome experience being able to sit in the back seat, kind of observe, first of all, how these angel flights work and also just hear the stories. I mean, yeah. That, that was the, like, I, you couldn't see that I was smiling because I had a mask on, but I was smiling because the stories just kept coming and kept coming out of Randall. And he was just telling us one thing after another that was super inspiring. So that was an awesome flight. Thanks. We're gonna head IFR back to Midway. There you go. Good luck, Randall. That's right. This was an experience that definitely inspired me to want to start doing these angel flights as much as I can. Some of us do this whole flying thing as a career, some as a part-time gig, and others just do it for fun. And this is how we can use our pilot privileges for a good cause. Pilots have the ability to volunteer their time, fuel, and aircraft to make a difference with aviation. And I hope this video inspires you to do just that. A link is down in the description that will lead you to the angel flight landing page if you're interested in getting involved. Again, if you want to see the full length edit of of this flight with all of Randall's stories and inspirational little tidbits and stuff. It's truly, truly awesome and definitely check it out. It's on Cockpit Club. Link is down in the description. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe if you haven't. Until next time, I challenge you to get out and use your pilot certificate to make a difference, even in a small way. Fly safe. We'll see you in the next one.